God, oh, some is your name. You do mighty things, you do the glorious things, you're a faithful God, oh, some is your name. imani yako kwako bwana na hawataibika bwana wewe hawaipishi watu wako bwana wewe hauachili watu wako bwana ndio oh, yes. ana tunasema wewe ni mwaminifu lord we have not had lord hatujasikia yeyote ambaye amekuamini bwana akaibika hatujasikia bwana yeyote ambaye amekuamini akaibika Tunasema wewe Bwana ni Mungu mwaminifu. Wewe ni Mungu mwaminifu. Tuende wapi pengine Bwana? Tuende wapi pengine Bwana? Kama kanisa tuende wapi kwingine Bwana pasipo kwako? Where else do we go? Kwako kuna uzima wa milele Bwana. Bwana tusamehe dhambi zetu. Bwana tutakase. Bwana nena na mioyo yetu. Si Bwana utuangaze njia ya kwako. Tuangaze Bwana njia ya kwako. Siongee na nafsi zetu leo Bwana. Inuliwe Bwana na utukuke mahali hapa. In Jesus name we pray believing and trusting. In Jesus name we pray believing and trusting. 
Let us appreciate the Lord in his house. We want to appreciate the band and the praise and worship team. Even as we take our seats, may the Lord bless you and give you the grace to continue serving him. Mungu wabariki sana. Tungependa ningependa kuchukua hii fursa kuweza kuwashukuru uh, viongozi wa hili kanisa. Uh, nikianza na Reverend uh, Mungu akubariki sana na hao viongozi wengine kwa sababu ya kunipatia fursa ya kuweza kukuja kuhubiri uh, injili ya Bwana. Ningependa pia uh, kushukuru Bwana kwa sababu pasipo Bwana uh, singeweza kukuwa hata nasimama hapa. Uh, pia before before I begin the preaching of God's word I want to ask for your permission and for your indulgence. As you can see, it's, all, it's already 12.20, actually 12.25. I think you will allow me much more time than, than I'm usually allowed. I ask that I come peacefully. Staki kustaki ni watu wajuja ni watu wakuvuruga. Apana. So I ask for your indulgence a bit uh, so that I don't rush. Uh, I've been hearing some amazing stories out of the Resambo. Can, can we appreciate what the Lord is doing in this church? I'm saying I've been hearing some amazing testimonies. I'm also tempted to ask the Reverend to bring me back here. <laughs> but Naskia, Naskio Basi Shaenda. That train has already left the station. As I was just sitting down there, I was I was I felt I felt I want to read a verse for this church uh, in light of what the Lord is doing. I want to read a verse from the book of uh, from the book of Isaiah. This is not our sermon today, but I feel the Lord wants us to hear this verse. Uh, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 2, the Bible is saying to the church of Resambo, enlarge the place of your tent and let, uh, let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right, you shall expand to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear for you will not be ashamed Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Kanisa la Resambo. Ununa zile viti ziko pale chi juu nyuma. Taftini njia mzipanke kwa hii kanisa. Taftini tu njia. COVID imeisha. Tafteni njia mjaribu mzipange hapa. Buwana anasema, ye anasema kaneno laki, enlarge the place of your tent. Si maneno yangu ni maneno ya buwana. Let them stretch out of the curtains of your dwelling place. Ukisikia nikisema ningependa kurudi, nikisikia ya maneno ya buwana. So zile vitis kwa pala chini na wasi, I, I beg of you like, like a servant of the Lord. Look for a way to put them down. Look for a way. Tafteni njia, these vitis yekwe chini. Let us trust the Lord. The Lord is saying, enlarge the place of your tent. He, that is the word of the Lord. And I am convinced we even now need to start trusting God for a sanctuary. We have been in a tent for far too long. One as if you were. I feel convinced in my heart. You can start praying. Even before we get an architect, start praying. Anza kuomba mapema. Ambia buwana, anza kuomba mapema. And the Lord is hearing the cries, the cries of his people. And we, we, we are trusting God. Uh, we, we were having a discussion before you, allow me five more minutes. We were having a discussion in our church in Juja. Our chair lady was challenging us uh, about when we were celebrating 10 years. I want first to appreciate all of you who came for the celebration. Mungu wabariki sana. The chair lady in our church was challenging us to trust God. Then in, in the next 10th, the other 20th anniversary that we shall be doing that celebration in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a in a church structure, not a tent. So that is what our child Our child was telling us we need to start praying and even trusting God towards our direction. And I was telling the child lady that is a very good idea. He was even challenging us, maybe we need to even start thinking about giving towards that process. But there is a small problem. Kuna shida kidogo. Kidogo to kidogo ambo lazima tu suluhishe. Many years ago, <laughs> my father who has now gone to be with the Lord, I had a friend of mine uh, ambaye alikuwa ameonesha kule yako tu shago babako kama ni mzuri na kuonesha ngapa ali pa kujenga na kuambia sasa when you come of age jenga mahali hapa so rafiki yangu moja kambua akaonesha mahali ambapo tajenga tukua university 
vile alimaliza tulimaliza university kumaliza university akaanza ak, kupata pesa karudi nyumbani akafanyia nyumba ya babake ile ya kitambo akaifanya upgrade akai akaijenga na mawe mpaka ile kosi ya nne akapiga na madram huko na akapaka rangi then akajenga ka cube kake kadogo wa pale alionyeshwa na babake na akaeka stima lakini yako eka stima kwa babake aliweka stima kwa nyumba ya kwa nyumba yake na hiyo mambo ikaisha sasa vile pesa zilikuwa nyingi sana akaenda scold moja akamwambia babake ningependa pale ulinionyesha nijenge nyumba sasa ya, ya mawe nyumba iko na heshima babake kamwambia kuna shida hata kama nilikuonesha ngojea tu nitakuambia akienda kumuuliza babake na muombe nini ngojea tu nitakuambia akamwambia for almost 3 4 years in the fourth year the, that man he told me to pray with him so one day I think we were driving with my dad to see someone in town. I decided to tell my dad that story. Kwa sasa ndio mimi understand ni mambo gani. So my dad akanisikiza, akaniuliza, vile tulifika town kabla tujotoka kwa gari akaniuliza, na huyo kijana umeniambia aliweka stima kwake? Eh, kwa babake kuna stima? Ikamwambia hapana. Ah, akaniambia na hata aja jenga. Huyo mjamaa hata hakuna siku babake atamruhusu ajenge. Afanye hivi. Hii weekend and then atafute njia kutoyo stima kwa hiyo cube yake aiweke kwa babake and then after some time atafute bahasha nikiwezekana sikaeke less than 20000 apige kwa hiyo bahasha aende kule nyumbani aambie babake angependa amsamee kwa jikuna pale alifanya priority zake vibaya then awachane na babake then aombe the young man decided to do that akaenda katoa stima kwake akaweka kwa babake na akapelekea babake hiyo bahasha december vile ilenda december hata akuuliza babake swali. Babake alimwambia pale ulikuwa nimekuambia kutoka January kuja ujenge. Na hiyo January babake ndiye alimchimbia mitaro na pesa yake. So niko naambia chair lady wa church yetu na leadership wangu kule Juja hiyo story. Nikawaambia hatuwezi eka stima kule kwetu Juja. Kama nyinyi hamna stima. <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Hatuwezi anza kuvuta stima kule kama huko hakuna nini so sisi tunaomba na nyinyi sana nyinyi ndio mmetufunga tungekuwa tusha apply stima kule chini so mimi 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 in fact mimi reverend i say this in advance i am pledging a million shillings to the building of the sanctuary in advance when you are ready to collect an offering when you are ready to collect an offering when we are ready to collect an offering i am pledging the, to give a million shillings towards the building of a sanctuary here in Jude, in Rwesambu. Amen. Amen. When we are ready to call, whether it is this year or next year, I am seeing this in advance. Myself and my family, we are pledging a million. Atuna hiyo pesa, ma'am. Atuna. We are pledging a million shillings. So that that work would be done. Ndiyo mnyinyi mkiweke wa stima. Hata sisi tutaanza kutafuta watu wa Kenya Power. Tuambi wavute stima. That is the word of the Lord. We go into the words of God words in the book of uh, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Abona shege ndio treasurer wetu adika ta record pahali. Hiyo pledge yangu in advance. Na Mungu atatubariki. Acts chapter 2, we read the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 2 and the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it and it and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave utterance and they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men from every nation under heaven and when this sound occurred the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone had them speak in his own language then they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another look are not all these who speak Galilean Galileans and how is it that we hear each of each of them in our own language in which we were born Parthians and Medes and Elamites those dwelling in Mesopotamia Judea Cappadocia Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia Egypt and parts of Libya and joining Cyrene visitors of Rome both Jews and apostles 
Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speak in our own tongues and wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking them said, these are full of new wine. We will be reading the entire chapter of chapter 2, but because of time, allow me to just read of it separately as it comes. Today, our topic of discussion is Pentecost. I want to say something for one minute before it goes into God's word. We know what happens when Christ dies. Christ is, uh, is, is crucified and he resurrects. And you know, Christ appears to his disciples over a period of 40 days. He appears to uh, the disciples together in a house where he shows himself to Thomas, who was still in disbelief, you know, holding his hand, confirming that, the, that this indeed is the master, is the risen king. He also appears to them together. He appears to the two disciples on the way to, to a mouse. And for this a period of essentially 40 days, from when Christ dies to 50 days actually, from when Christ dies to when we have the Pentecost, there's a period of 50 days. There's actually also a period of 10 days from when Christ ascends to heaven. And when he says the last words to the disciples, he tells them, go into the entire world and preach the gospel, baptize every creature in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and no law you will be, I will be with you to the end of the age. From that period where he ascends into heaven and leaves the promise of the Father, there is a period of 10 days. And then we have Pentecost. And Pentecost for me and you is, is an amazing period. There are churches I know, like the Orthodox Church in Ethiopia, that have a big celebration for Pentecost. So they celebrate Easter, they celebrate Christmas, and they also go ahead to celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost for me and you is a, is, is, is a, is a period of seeing the fulfillment of scripture in the book of Joel chapter 2 where the Lord is saying the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit Pentecost for me and you is the infilling of the Holy Spirit and, and today we may not have enough time to be able to deal with all those issues but Pentecost is important for all of us because the Holy Spirit is promised by the Father. The Holy Spirit, we will see indeed when God gives opportunity, that the Holy Spirit was also there in the Old Testament. You remember the last time I was here, we read somewhere where the Holy Spirit of the Lord filled someone, you know, a bad boy, Samson. And when he was filled by the Holy Spirit, he was able to tear a lion like a young lamb. So the Holy Spirit is indeed seen in the days of the old covenant. But now in the new covenant, he is not just manifesting himself, but he has become God within us. So the, we who live in the new covenant, Pentecost represents both the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. They are actually two separate items and we don't have time to deal with that today. So Pentecost for me and you is something that is, that is critical, is an encouragement for every believer, is, is the fulfillment of a promise, is the fulfillment of prophecy. As we study God's word today, and because of time, I want to look into this chapter in four different ways. I want to indeed, uh, because of time, to, to look at the chapter two of Acts in four different ways. Today we will be looking uh, in this chapter about we will look, we will see the promise. We will also see the wait or the waiting period. We will see the infilling and we will see the impact. So when you're doing your notes, write somewhere down, we are going to be doing the promise, the wait, the infilling, and the impact. I'm only separating that to, to, because of time and I need to be able to quickly go through what we're able to study in the chapter 2 of, of, of the book of Acts. So we will begin now then with the promise. It is good for me and you to know that the promise of the Holy Spirit is promised to all believers. It is, it is not for certain people. The Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is a helper. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a promise to every believer. We see this promise in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We will be seeing shortly uh, in scripture examples where this has been recorded. The first place I want us to look is in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 14 to 21. What we've not read. The Bible says, but Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice, Acts 2, 14 to 21, and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for we are not men who are drunk. As you suppose, since it is only the that hour of the day, Peter is telling the people listening to him after Pentecost, do not be deluded. Do not think that we are drunk men. No. This is not something that is just happening. He is telling those men to 
be careful. You know what had happened? They, they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They had now gone out. And they were preaching with boldness. They were speaking in new tongues. These were Galileans, normal men. You know, this crew of people were not the most learned of men. But some of them were speaking in Greek, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them were speaking in Latin. Some of them were speaking even in Arab. Bless the Lord for our God. Men in Egypt would hear these men. So he's telling them, this is not just something, any. this is not a normal occurrence. And I want to present to you, especially those who are students of theology, many men who study theology in its theological aspect struggle, struggle with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Most men, ladies and gentlemen, just think the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to help us towards godliness. And he does that. We first receive the Holy Spirit, the indwelling, there are two things that will be mentioned today. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit happens when a believer receives the Lord. When you receive the gospel, you be, your, your heart becomes the temple of who? The Holy Spirit. But the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a continuous process. It's what is happening in Pentecost. So many theologians struggle with that. They, they, they don't want to speak in tongues. You know, they... They don't want the discomfort. They don't want this boldness. They don't want the dying to self that happens when the spirit fills a man. They, they, don't, they don't want the experience because the experience for some of us is not full of decorum. But Pope Peter is telling this man, you can see Peter and his other disciples are being suspected of being drunk. So men of decorum, men of good standing in society, will struggle with an experience like this. Learned men like me will struggle with an experience like this. But you see, do you see that they are being suspected even of being drunk? There is even a phrase we read when I began. They were saying this indeed looks like new wine. We can have an entire discussion there. I will avoid that discussion. This man saw wine ili akukunywa. They did not know that these men were not drunk in wine, but they were drunk with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It is a wine that was different. It was not the wine that intoxicates men, but this is the wine, the Holy Spirit, who makes men different from what they were. The Bible says, Peter is telling those men, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter is saying, what is happening? What you are experiencing is the fulfillment of scripture. And the Bible says in verse 17 of Joel, or sorry, verse 17 of Acts, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit, and your sons shall prophesy, your young men shall see dreams, your old men shall dream visions. Verse, 20, verse 18. And on my maid servants and on my men servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Verse 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, and smoke. Verse 20. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter is telling these men, whatever you are seeing today was promised by the prophet Joel. Think about it. That even a man who lived in the days of Joel, men who lived in the days of the old covenant, you know, when they were listening to the young, small prophet, minor prophet, they had these words. That in the last days, me and you, ladies and gentlemen, have the amazing honor of living in the last days. What, when are the last days? The last days are the, is the period after the, the death and the resurrection of Christ. That is when the last days begin. So the men who are receiving the Holy Ghost were receiving it 10 days after the beginning of the last days. He is telling these men that this is going to happen. This is already written in your Bibles. This portion of Peter's sermon was preached, what we've read, after the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, he is quoting the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. I, I think about that promise. I think about what the Lord is promising. I think about when the promise was given and how much, how do you respond when you think about this promise? You can only respond that we serve a God who is faithful. I mean, think about in that all, all long in the days of Joel. The Lord is saying, I am going to pour out my spirit. 
on all flesh. He habagui, ye hachagui. I will pour it out on men. I will pour it out on women. The young men shall dream dreams. The old men sh 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 shall see visions. Others shall prophesy. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. There shall be an element of, there shall be great, a great manifestation. When you consider the promise of the Father, you see that our God indeed is faithful. And the question we ask ourselves who live today, why then would we struggle with this promise? Why would we, desi why would we not desire to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Why would we not desire, ladies and gentlemen, to experience what people are experiencing in the days of Pentecost? If this promise is for all believers, if this promise is for me, is for you who live in the last days, why should we not desire it? I want to read one more example of this promise in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. The Bible says, and being assembled together with him, this is Christ the Lord, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Think about this man. These men are sitting with Christ. Christ is about to leave them. He is telling them, you have heard me tell you many times. When I am gone, I am not going to leave you behind alone. I am going to send the helper. You, unlike John, will not just be baptized by water, but you shall also be baptized by the Holy Spirit. He, this is a promise now. This is a promise now in the New Testament. There are many places, but I only choose to read this one because it is what is, is because of time. He is telling the disciples that for you, there is, there is this one thing. Do not disperse. Do not go back home. Go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise that is being given to you. And what do these men do? These men go back to Jerusalem. But there's a question they ask there that, that is really off. They're asking the Lord, will you restore the kingdom of Israel? And I was thinking, Lord, these men were thinking about the restoration of the kingdom. During the days of Jesus, the kingdom of Israel was under captivity by the Romans. They were basically living in the captivity or in the colonialization of the Romans. These men are asking Jesus for freedom, for political freedom from the Romans. Yet the Lord is offering the Holy Spirit. You see, you see how sometimes me and you can be caught up with what is what looks grand, what looks Today and now, they are asking the Lord, now that you are going, kwa sababu sasa unaenda, utatuwacha tuko tunafinyiliwa na warumi. Lakini buwaba, yesu anawambie, mimi nitaatumia, I am going to send you a helper. There will be an infilling, there will be a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if these men knew, and they will know very shortly, they, if they knew what they were comparing, they were comparing the Holy Spirit to political freedom, ladies and gentlemen. If they knew that this Holy Spirit would give them a boldness to not only take on the political people, but to also take even on the religious groups. If they only knew that this noble, high, high, difficult man would now be the people running the gospel. If they knew what the Holy Spirit was going to do for them, I don't think they would have asked that question. How many times, ladies and gentlemen, are we consumed by that which is not very important. It's not very important. It's not what is right in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord is promising better, but these men are looking for something else that in the eyes of men would look honorable. We would say they are patriotic men, but in the grand scheme of things, these men were not just deliverers of their country. They were deliverers of God's people. These men would preach the gospel in Judea, in Samaria. They would go beyond Samaria. They would preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen, to even the Gentiles. I present it to you. The, the Romans, they were afraid of, ladies and gentlemen. Many years later, the, 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 the religion they began would even destroy the Romans if they understood but they will soon understand. I am trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the promise that was given in Joel, the promise that was given now to Jesus, to his disciples at the place of ascension, is a promise that does not go away. See, we say his promises are here and amen. 
The promise, dear gentlemen of the Father, does not go away. The promise of the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a promise that we, that we can hold dear. It's a promise that we can look up to. Both the indwelling that we already have and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you look carefully, you will see it is not just this instance where the Holy Spirit fills this man. But there are many other instances. In the house of Cornelius, and we will do this when I come back when the God gives time. We need to desire, ladies and gentlemen, we need to tell the Lord to do it in our days. If that promise, ladies and gentlemen, is for everybody, if that promise, ladies and gentlemen, said in the days of Joel, was for everybody, then we should hold dear to the same, same promise. We should be like John. We should be like Peter. We should be like Matthew and Bartholomew. We should wait dearly. We should cry out to the Lord. We should tell the Lord, as these men were expectant, as these men were going back to Jerusalem, to the upper room, give us the same, same kind of heart, O oh Lord. Give us the heart of Peter. Give us the heart of John. Give us the heart of Mary. Give us the heart of the family members of Christ, of James and Jude, who went back to the upper room. And for 10 days, they would pray and wait for the promise of the Father, the promise given to Peter and John and James and Andrew. is the same, same promise the Lord is giving you and me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for that promise. Lord, won't you give us the grace to hold on to that promise. Won't you give us the grace, O oh Lord, to, to run with the same, same promise. If we need to wait, our Father, help us to wait like this man. This man, the promise that they were given. Imagine, it is the same, same promise that me and you who live in the last days are being given. That in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. And I, Nasita Bagua, in the last days, I will not choose between men and women. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. My people shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. These words that we have spoken today were said by Jesus before the ascension. Ten days later, we read what happened in the first verses of chapter 2 of Acts. It is noteworthy, ladies and gentlemen, for me to say this, that in the old covenant, certain people were filled with the spirit at certain times for specific purposes. In the Old Testament... As we look at the promise, the spirit would fill certain people at certain times for specific purposes. Whether it was the people who were given the filled by the Holy Spirit to be uh, to to make items in the temple, whether it was Asaph and his family filled by the Holy Spirit to be able to write songs and to be able to play music in the temple, whether it is the instances we see in the book of Judges like Samson, the Spirit fills him, he takes a lion and splits it into two. But in the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, the promise is for everybody. The promise is not for pastors. The promise of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, number one, is for anyone who knows the Lord. I dare say that even the infilling that we are talking about today, that we are seeing in the day of Pentecost, does not choose. The book of Joel does not say speakers, preachers, ushers. No, it says I will pour out my spirit to all flesh. To all flesh. Everyone. Everyone is a candidate. I pray that we would hold dear that same promise. I pray that we would hold dear that same promise. That the promise that was given in the Old Testament and numerous other times in the New Testament would be a promise that we hold dear. Something happened this week in our church in Georgia that made me completely look at the workings of the Holy Spirit completely different. We have been trusting God to get into a certain sphere for many years. In fact, I remembered that even before I was a pastor there, from the time this church, the church in Georgia was opened, I would keep challenging Bishop then and Mom to, to consider doing ministry towards the young people in Georgia. And it's something we've, we've prayed for long and we continue to pray. Last week, the Lord opened a door very fast without us doing much. And as, as we were thinking about it and as I was driving back home, my, my heart was led to the book of Isaiah 60 verse 22. When the time is right, I, the Lord... We'll make it happen. I, the Lord, will hasten the matter. The Lord wants us to wait for that promise. He, he wants us to wait. He wants us to look at the promise and do what? And, and wait. He wants us to see the promise in Joel 
as our promise. He doesn't want us to give up. Because for some of us, it may tally. But he wants us to hold on to it. For some of us, it may take longer than others. But he wants us to hold dear to it. He wants us to be encouraged in his words. That when the time is right, when your 10 days, let's say for these people it was 10 days. When the 10 days is over, I the Lord will do it. I know for some of us they've been saying, Lord, I have been trusting you for years to speak in tongues. Lord, I've been trusting you for years to see the manifestation of your Holy Spirit. The Lord is saying when the time is right, I will make it happen. I will hasten the matter, ladies and gentlemen. Be encouraged. Do not give up. Do not give in. Believe in this God who is a faithful God. He gives a promise. And don't we see him in the book of Acts fulfilling that promise? I want us now to consider, when you have been given a promise, what, what do you wait? You, 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 what do you do? You wait on the promise. I mean, think about it. Maybe you are a parent here, and you come tell your daughter or your son, today in the evening, I'm going to come with, with kinder joy. Do not make such a mistake. If you tell your children you're going to come in the evening with kinder joy, the moment you knock the door like this, you will see your son and your daughter, if they're like mine, waiting for you outside the door. Daddy, where is kinder joy? They will not even say hi to you. They will be waiting. Even when in school, they will be waiting. They, they will be hoping. They will watakuwa kichuliza. Masaya juri tafika sangapi. I pray that the Lord would give us that kind of desire to wait on his promises. How do we respond to promises? We respond to promises by waiting. Let us now discuss about the wait. I want to read the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath journey. You, you, what, you've seen what we've read. We've read that the Lord tells these men to go back to where? To Jerusalem. And to wait for what? The promise of the Holy Spirit. What do these men do? They go to Jerusalem. It doesn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense for them, but they obey. The, the Lord is telling them, go to Jerusalem and wait. You know, Sometimes waiting is not easy. Okay. All the times, waiting is not easy. I want to say this, that one of my biggest struggles is waiting. I don't like waiting. I don't even like waiting for tea. You know, that's why where I take tea, I sit down, they see me, they bring tea. We, we don't want to wait. It is not our default setting. But the Lord is telling this man, he's telling Peter, he's telling John, he's telling Bartholomew, he's telling the disciples who saw him ascending to heaven, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. You know, the Lord has, was going. I'm trying to put them, myself in their shoes. The Lord was going, so they were not going to see him anymore. He wasn't going to be around anymore. They would probably have thought, to me pige injili miyakatatu. Watch at pale at the shores of Galilee. To 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 they go back to and verse 19 and they entered and when they had entered they went into the upper room where they were staying Peter, James, John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one and called in prayer and supplication with the women Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. Think about it they went back to Jerusalem I don't know if they lived on the upper room. We do not know. But daily, daily, every day, they would be found in the upper room. Daily, they would be found praying and making supplication. Daily, they would be found waiting on the Lord. I want to say this. For many years, I had struggled with the concept of both revival and in the feeling of the Holy Spirit. I have always considered that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is usually preceded by prayer. And rightfully so. There's an element of truth there. That the infilling of the Holy Spirit is presided by a, a period of prayer and expectation for the Lord to do his work. That the, the period just before revival is preceded by a, a serious desire for prayer and expectation for the Lord to do his work. 
and there's an element of truth. It's not 100%. These men go back to Jerusalem. Prayerfully, they are waiting. Prayerfully. They are seeking the Lord. They are expectant. They don't know when the Spirit is going to come, but every day they keep coming. I sometimes wonder, what if the Spirit did not come in 30 days? I am assured of this one thing. These men would have kept waiting for the Lord prayerfully. But now I have seen in the last one week as I prepared for this sermon that even, this, even the prayer itself, that even the expectation itself is a working of the Spirit himself. It is the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, who, who bats a burden in me and you to seek him. It is the Holy Spirit himself who bats in us an expectation to be able to desire the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that no man would glory, so that no man would say, I am a, let me put it this way, so-and-so is a revivalist, so-and-so is an expert in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the filling of the Holy Spirit, the entire process before and after is a work of the Spirit himself. And when, when you understand that, you become like this man. You wait patiently. You long for the manifestation of his power. You long for those gifts. The Bible tells me and you to desire some of those like, like prophecy. You desire, maybe you've never spoken in tongues, you desire that the Lord would do it in your days. You don't give up. And when you feel the Lord putting a burden in you for prayer, you respond to that burden. These men, every day, they would be found in the upper room, seeking the Lord, giving out their supplications. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a lesson for me and you to be learned. That even though the infilling of the Holy Spirit is preceded by prayer, by expectation, even that prayer and expectation is a working of the same, same Spirit. So that no flesh would glory in His presence. So that no man would be glorified. So that after the filling of the Holy Spirit, when we stand before God, we will not celebrate our gifts, but we will do what we will soon see in the impact of the whole, in the infilling. Peter does not talk about his power. He does not give a record of the things he has done. No, because it is the work of the Spirit himself. I dare say then the Spirit can fill you wherever he can fill you in your home. He can fill you in this church. He can fill you in the matatu. He can fill you in the toilet. Because it is the work of the Spirit himself, ladies and gentlemen. He can fill you. We pray he fills you in this church so that he can do it in our days. But he can do it wherever, however, and whoever. He can do it to anyone, ladies and gentlemen. Bless the Lord with me. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I will not choose when I want, how I want. And to whoever I will. That is the work of the Spirit. So now, ladies and gentlemen, even when I consider what is happening in light of what happened to us this week, I am now seeing it clearly. It is not our working. We are not more prayerful now. It is not our zeal, ladies and gentlemen. When my time is right, I, the Lord, when my time, ladies and gentlemen, I, we may have stayed for 20 plus years without building a church here, but when the time of the Lord comes, ladies and gentlemen, we already have a million shillings pledged, pledged oh, ladies and gentlemen. We already have a million, a whole one million has been pledged in advance. When my time is right, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Why then don't we wait on him? Why don't we tell the Lord, give us the grace, O oh God. Burden, burden in us. Give us a burden for prayer, Lord. Give us, a, give us an expectancy, Lord. Help us to desire more of you. Ladies, it is not the work of men. It is not the work of men. It is not the actions of men. And it is amazing for me to see it that way. Because when I see it that way, I stop working out my ministry. I stop working out my salvation. What do I do? I respond to that burden. Is the Lord telling me to pray? Me, I pray. Is he putting words in my mouth? Me, I open my mouth and speak them out. When people tell me I'm doing the wrong things, I know. If I don't do this, then I'll be indeed doing the wrong thing. This is not the work of man. These men did not do anything to receive the Holy Spirit. I am saying that confidently. I've been saying their prayers and their expectation, even that, was from the Spirit himself. It was the work of the Spirit. And now you understand why I'm separating the infilling and the indwelling. These men by this time already had the Spirit dwelling in them. 
because they were believers. But at Pentecost, the Spirit fills them up and there's a, there's, a, there's a manifestation of that feeling. So they already had the Spirit within them at the point where they received the Lord. But the Spirit continues to work in them. And when you, when, for men, for many men, we want to be in control. For many men, we want to work out stuff. For many pastors like me, we want to come up with strategies. For many ministers, we want to come up with 10 ways of doing things. Ladies and gentlemen, even if there will be 10 ways of doing things, those 10 ways will be of the Spirit himself. Can I ask you a simple question? Who can come to the Lord if the Lord does not call him? No one. Then why do we think we can be revived if the Lord does not revive us? How, why do we then think we can be filled with the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit does not do it? If we, the condition for the infilling of the Holy Spirit is being a believer. If you cannot become a believer by your own effort, what makes you think then you can work out the work of the Holy Spirit? And those who try to become like this man we see later on in, this chapter, in the chapters after, who goes to the apostles and wants to buy. He wants to do what? He wants to buy the power. Because he wants to work it out. The power of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, is not bought. I even dare say there is no price to be paid. Because even when the price is paid, it is the Spirit who causes the man to pay the price. If the Lord does not allow me to pray and fast, I need to pick a lunch. Takula kabisa. I don't take any credit, ladies and gentlemen. Now I see there is nothing I am doing. And it is a good encouragement for all of us then to begin wherever it is that we are. Where is the Lord giving you a burden to pray? Begin there. Is the Lord putting a burden of one day? Start with one day. Is the Lord putting a burden for two hours? Begin with those two hours. It is the work of the Spirit. But one thing we need to encourage each other as long as it is today, when the time is right, Idari ya Kenya ni mwadha ni nego tuma maodo magirire. Na kutire modo, kedo, kanodo, ogotuma mwadha ni ndaka kuradhime. That there is nothing that should be our encouragement as we wait. That when his time is right, we don't know how long we are, for some of us we even don't know how long we are going to wait. But when his time is right, ladies and gentlemen, this promise does not go away. The promise is still there. And the execution of the promise will happen. So what do we do in the meantime? We wait patiently. We wait patiently, prayerfully. We don't give up, even if it takes 10 years. But we are trusting God today that he will do it in our days. We continue telling him, Joe, you know, atakama nangojea buwana, mi baru mumu ambia, Joe hima buwana, buwana usi chelewe, fanya haya maku yako, siku zetu buwana, siyo atende. So kama hii wiki yote, we've been praying like that in Juja. The stories we are hearing in Ruesambo, Lord. Hatutaki kungojea miaka ishirini kama wao. Do it in our days, oh God. Buwana, matenda haya maku yako. Na hata kama utachelewa, sisi tutakungoja kwa nini? Tumesikia unayatenda. That is how we wait. We wait patiently. Even if it takes 10 years, we wait patiently. Even if it takes two days, we wait patiently, ladies and gentlemen. Prayerfully. Why do we wait prayerfully? Because when we wait prayerfully, God gives us the grace to have our hopes in the right person. Because if my hope was not in Christ alone, I will give up. Some of us are trusting God for things that cannot be done by men. There is nothing a man can do. There is nothing. Kama ni ugonjwa, haina dawa. Kama ni biyashara, yu biyashara yako, lazimu utachotwa. Hakuna njia. That is where some of us are. That is where we wait prayerfully. Because waiting prayerfully says, I trust you. That's what it says. I trust the Lord. I pray that we can be able to wait like that. For everything, for the infilling of the Holy Ghost for the manifestations thereof, that we can be able to wait like that. Even for those of us maybe who are waiting for the Lord for things that there's something you can do, I want to challenge you to become like the others who there's nothing they can do. Tell the Lord, Mibwana, mimi neenda tukufungua duka kwa jistaki ukukaa nyumbani. Na ifungua tu. Jistaki ukukaa nyumbani. Mina taa kwa ni ifungue buwana ni kungoje. Si duka ni meenda kufungua buwana, ni wewe ni meenda kungoja. 
Bwana sisi hivi nimeenda ku drop. Ni wewe bwana nimeenda kutafuta. Bwana si ati ni kazi naenda kutafuta kwa hiyo factory. Si 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 ati ni wakati ni wewe naenda kutafuta. Bwana ni wewe naamini. Eh? I want to say that even for some of us those businesses will be closed because it is the will of God. But those who wait upon the Lord, even if the business is closed, they will soar up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. Even if they are running away from auctioneers, they will walk, ladies and gentlemen, and not get tired. That is the promise of those who wait upon the Lord. Why do you want to do something else? Why do you want to do something else, ladies and gentlemen? I would rather wait any day. I would rather wait for the manifestations of his power. I would rather wait any day for the continuous infilling of the Holy Ghost. If this man, it happened for this man, I am confident it can happen for me. There is no difference between me and James and Peter. It can happen for me. Brethren, let us wait on the Lord prayerfully. Let us wait on the Lord with expectancy. You're saying, Pastor, I have never spoken in tongues. I am saying, wait on the Lord. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. Be expectant. You're saying, Pastor, I have struggles in this and that. And I know the Holy Spirit says that one of his fruits is love and patience. You struggle with patience. I say to you, wait on the Lord. And again, what do I say? I say, wait on the Lord prayerfully. Be expectant that when his day comes, siku yake ikifika, yeye atafanya hayo mambo ya kamilike. Bible ya ESV inasema, I will hasten the matter. But I prefer the one that says, he will do it. Because I, I don't want to be concerned how it will be. I just know the Lord will do it. That is our confidence in the Lord. Do not beat yourself. There are people who don't want to come to church, don't want to come to Keshas because they are not prayerful enough. I say to you, wait. And again I say, wait on the Lord. They say, oh, I don't know. I've never spoken in tongues. And when I come for Keshas, everyone is speaking. I say to you, wait patiently, expectantly. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. It is the work of the Lord. You need not speak your own things. Wacha, wacha kuiba tangza watu wengine. Wacha kusikiza vile reverend anasemu apana. Wait, I dare say wait. Wait again on the Lord. You know, don't want to, don't watch TV and you say, oh, this guy is a prophet. Let me see how he does this. Like, no, I say, do not, do not be a counterfeit pro prophet. I say, wait. And again, I say, wait on the Lord patiently. Go to the upper room. If you have an upper room, go to that upper room. I say to you confidently, even if the Lord does not feel you today, I go on to say, wait and wait patiently. When the time is right, when the Lord's time, not our time is right, even as we tell him, Joe Hima, even as we tell him to come do it in our days, we are simply doing what? Waiting on the Lord. Prayerfully. I hope the Lord would give me, especially me, the grace to wait on him. Because waiting on him, I'm simply saying, I trust you. I, I trust you, Lord. You can do it. You are well able. When this man had waited, finally, we see the infilling. The Bible says in the verses we've read, suddenly there came a sound from heaven, verse 2, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2, as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They then appeared to them, divided tongues of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, what they were waiting for finally happened. This is, this is our promise, ladies and gentlemen. The men who were around them were saying, indeed, these men are speaking different languages. The men who were around them who could hear them speak Greek, could hear them speak Latin, could hear them speak even Ar Ar Arabic. They, they, were, they, were, they were marveled. The truth is for many of us, one of the things that causes us not to wait on the Lord is what men are saying. The, 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 the men, men, many times, what men are saying sometimes causes us, not, sometimes waiting, trusting, staying in the upper room is not convenient with men. But these men, once the spirit came upon them, you see what men are doing. They are amazed. They even desire it. There are Bible commentaries who say 120 men were filled with the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. There are commentaries that say some of these men, 120, were not part of the initial group. They were just people who kept seeing these guys come prayerfully and wait. Along the day, they joined them. There are even commentaries that say there were people around that area 
who had these people pray, joined them for prayer, and were filled with the Holy Ghost. Think about it. We should not allow what men say then. Stop us. Because the same, same men, when the Holy Spirit is filled on us, the same, same men, when God does his work, some of them will desire to join us. Some of them, ladies and gentlemen, will be saying, indeed, these men, this, are these, this not Peter and James? Let us find this encouragement in the Lord that when he is ready to do his work, even the words of men cannot stop him. And indeed, the words of men should not stop me and you to trust in the Lord. We see that the promise is finally fulfilled. The Bible goes on to say, verse 13, others were mocking them saying, they are full of the new wine. We see the promise is now fulfilled. We have confidence in the same, same God. The God of Peter is our God today. That the same infilling of the spirit that happened at Pentecost can happen again in our days. Ladies and gentlemen, I say this again. We have this confidence that what happened in the days of Peter can happen today. What happened in the days of John, ladies and gentlemen, can happen today. What happened in Cornelius' house, I even want to put it this way. What happened in Cornelius' house can happen in Stephen Jogona's house. Put it for you, said, Lord, what happened in Cornelius' house can happen in my own house. This is our confidence that the same in feeling that was done in the days of Pentecost can be done in our days today. How do we respond to that knowledge? We say, do it in our days, O oh God. Do it in our days, O oh God. We are expectant of you. Lord, our expectancy is in you. Do it, Buana. Si ufanya hayo mambo. Si utende haya makuu, Buana. Buana si kukawe na kujazwa kwa roho. Hata sisi, Buana, si tuka experience mambo kama haya. May the Lord do it in our days, ladies and gentlemen. I say, may the Lord bear the burden of prayer and expectancy in your heart and in my heart. I pray, let us become like Peter, like James and John, men who are expectant. Let us become like the disciples who gathered in one accord traveling every day seeking the Lord every day for the infilling indeed ladies and gentlemen their labor in the upper room was not in vain I pray that our labor also will not be in vain I wish to finally say that when the infilling finally came the infilling could be seen in these men in form of number one the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 and you know some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, patience, peace, long-suffering, kindness. The Bible says among us these things, there is no law. For many Pentecostals, we see the indwelling and the infilling of the Holy Spirit only in the manifestations thereof. In prophecy, in word of knowledge. First Corinthians, I believe, is the one that talks about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the Lord is telling me and you today that the Lord is a God of the entire package. He does not just give prophecy and then does not give you the grace to fear him. No, the Spirit causes you to know God's word, to obey it, to follow it. You can then not be a prophet who lives in sin. The Lord does not just give the healing ministry and steal from you love, kindness, and joy. We become spirit-filled Christians when the entire package is part and parcel of our lives, when the entire package is what we desire. I pray that we will not be a Christians who only desire the prophecy, the speaking in tongues. I pray that we will not be just Christians who desire the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the tongues, the interpretation of tongues. But I pray we will be holistic, spirit-filled Christians who also desire love, kindness, patience, long-suffering. The Bible says those who endure to the end shall receive a crown of life, not those who prophesy. Not those who speak in tongues. It says those who endure. So it is important for me to have the fruit of long suffering. It is important for me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to remove, because for too long, we have put so much emphasis on one portion of the spirit of God. He is the spirit of love. He is the spirit of kindness, ladies and gentlemen. He is the spirit that leads me and you towards the Lord. We cannot come to the Lord apart from the spirit's work. We cannot walk in obedience Apart from this, it is the spirit who convicts you and me as unto sin and causes us to go back to him. We don't see your spirit-filled nature in only the, the gifts thereof. Can I give an example of a man who was full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit but lacked the fruits thereof? Is there a better man than Samson himself? Think about Samson. 
But we bless the Lord that at the end of his journey, our God who is slow to hang and abounding in love, drew him back to himself. I pray that we would be different. I pray that our spirit-filled nature would be holistic. That as we desire prophecy, let us also desire self-control. That as we desire, as we prayerfully wait for speaking in tongues, let us also wait for love and kindness and goodness and meekness. Wewe umeikanyanga mtu ambaye amaokoka amepiga kiatu ya white, umkanyanga kidogo hivi na kumwambia, "Kwenda huko." Paka una shino, "Where is meekness there?" Kiatu utapiga rangi ndugu yangu. Hauje sije mtu akikuambia kule uko tushago kuna watu wanakuambianga, "Ukiendelea kucheza na pesa yangu, niteeka Yesu kando na ni deal na wewe." Kweli hapo kunaona unaona uungu hapo. I pray that the Lord would do it in our days. As he gives us a gift of prophecy, he would give us the boldness to preach the gospel like Peter. As he gives us a spirit of speaking in tongues, he would give us the zeal that we see in the apostle Paul. The apostle Paul is given lashes. He goes through shipwrecks, ladies and gentlemen. He is beaten. He is torn to death. He is dropped down the wall in Damascus. He dies alone in Rome. He is imprisoned two times and finally he is killed. We need the love. We need the love for God that we see in Stephen. Not just the prophecy. Stephen as he is being beaten to death, he is saying, forgive this man. Wewe umeshindwa kusahau, kusamehe bwanako. Stephen anasamehe mtu ambaye anampiga na mawe. Bwanako tu ni kuchelewa tu amechelewa. Amekuja suti saa tano za usiku. Na umesema utaaja msamee kabisa wewe. Lakini Stefano anapigwa na mawe. Anasema samea watu kwa sababu hawajui ni nini wanafanya. And he sees what does he see? He sees the son of man. Ah you cannot see the son of man if you forgive, refuse to forgive your brother. You cannot see. how do you see the son of man? and you are counting the mistakes of your sister i pray that we would be holistic spirit filled men that is why i said the infilling of the holy spirit is a what continuous process it happens in chapter 2 we see it again in the days of cornelius houses we keep seeing it we see philip speaking to this ethiopian eunuch and the spirit fills this man We see the operation of the spirit even in the days of revelation. The Bible says these men did not love their lives to the point of death. They were zealous men. They were not just prophets. Today everyone wants to be a prophet. Everyone wants to speak in tongues. Today all we want to do is to interpret tongues. All we want to do today is to have a healing ministry. I pray that we would be holistic spirit-filled Christians. The infilling would be continuous until we overflow. That as he fills us and gives us the gifts of speaking in tongues, he would help us. Some of us need help with forgiving others. Don't you think for some of us, just forgiving others it is, is a miracle? For some of us, I even feel like the bigger miracle. Some of us are even sick emotionally because of unforgiveness. Don't you think maybe it would be better for you first to get healed? Some of us ladies and gentlemen we are struggling with self control it's ruining our families it's ruining our businesses it's ruining everything that we do but all we want to do is speaking tongues i pray that we would desire to not only speaking tongues but to walk in self control some of us cannot even be trusted na pesa ya chama uko chama ya sita na hizo chama zote ukipewa pesa hivi uwe mrigo round kikufikia ukishakula yako hivi unahama na unaongea na lugha i pray that the lord would continually fill you to see that you are not an honest honorable man that as you speaking in tongues you'd be speaking in tongues and going back to all those charmers no ngoje mfike namba 30 ndio kila mtu akule so it's a hard gospel ladies and gentlemen holistic spirit filled christians that we should desire that should be our prayer That should be the prayer of a man someone like me holistic love peace kindness prophecy speaking in tongues all those things together and don't you see those things in the apostles don't you see the love peter and paul especially paul had for the gentiles that he was willing to almost die for them 
Don't you see the patience these people had? Don't you see the patience of Ananias as the disciples Paul, now then Saul, and now Paul into the most holy faith? Don't you see the love for this man? Don't you see their patience? Don't you see their love? Their long, don't you see their long suffering? Do you know all these men, all of them, minus none, probably except John, all died painfully for the faith? And the truth is, this man at Pentecost, Peter was crucified upside down. Thomas, I hear he died in, in India preaching the gospel. All these men, even the others who came after them, like Paul himself, is, is killed in Rome. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, how then it is to be a fully spirit-filled Christian. Can we desire then that the entire whole bread, if there's anything like that? You know, some of us just, you know, I see my daughter and I say this with a lot of respect. You give him bread, he finally eats elect you kundani kwanza. Akshamaliziyo kundani, ndiena kula crust. Mimi, nikikula mkati shidi yangu inakunga ninja. So, nakulanga kila kitu, sichaguangi. Can we be watu kukula mkate yote? Tunamombia buwana, we want to be a hundred percent. We just don't want to be speakers of tongues. Na kwetu ni mevuruga buwana. Unajua mimi mdomo yangu ikifunguka. Nikiongea. Nikiongea buwana hivi. Nikiongea hata watu wanashindu watafanya nini. Siombie buwana atusaidie. You see, the promise is there. Why don't we then wait? And then indeed the Lord is saying continuously, I'll keep filling you up. I pray that we would wait on everything. That is, that is the lesson I've been learning this week. That when his time is right, everything. It explains why for some of us we are going through difficult times. Because those difficult times will birth patience and long suffering. You know, these two months ago, the last two months I've been struggling with an element of a business I run. I've been telling the Lord, what are you doing? Then I read a portion of scripture where Paul is saying, I pray that my imprisonment, this is in the book of Philippians, I pray that my imprisonment would be for your glory. And I've been telling the Lord, I pray even this fight that I am losing would be for your glory. The man who struggles with patience is learning, don't you see the infilling of the Holy Spirit there? Don't you see the work of the Holy Spirit? Some of us, the reason why the business is going down is all the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't you embrace it. I pray that the Lord would give you the grace not just to go through that process, but to learn what he wants you to learn. That also, ladies and gentlemen, is part and parcel of the work of the Holy Spirit. Long suffering, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness. There is nowhere I have learned meekness like, like being a pastor. And kindness. There are things I used to hear people tell me many years ago, I would blast them. Nowadays I sit there and tell the Lord, oh, Buana, Buana Sunis ID. Is that not the work of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen? Someone comes and tells you, Pastor, wewe unafau nilipie school fees. Unakula tu peke yako. How do you respond to such a man? Is that not the work of the Holy Spirit? That you will finally pray for this man. Tell him like Peter, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give to you in the name of the Father. Let that speak. Tafuta kazi. Kazi ipatikane. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel there's a lesson I have learned this week. That I want to be an entire spirit-filled man. Everything. Leaving nothing behind. We must wind up our sermon today as we speak about the impact then of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I'll, I'll only read a small portion because our time is gone. You can read this when you go home. In the book of Second uh, Acts chapter 2, we see verse 40. Allow me just to read that portion. You read the rest of the portion before when you go home. And with many words he testified and exhorted them saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then who, those who are gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Ladies and gentlemen, the impact of the Holy Ghost, the infilling, we don't have enough time. I only want to speak about one thing, salvation. There are many things we can talk about. 
But because of time, I only want to talk about salvation. The Bible is saying, after these men received the Holy Ghost, they went out there boldly. Do you remember a few chapters before, Peter had denied the Lord how many times? Three times. He had gone into hiding. Do you know a few chapters before, James, John, Bartholomew, and all these men were in hiding. They had forsaken Christ. They were scared. They were without courage. But when you read the book of second, when you read chapter 2 of Acts, you see people preaching with boldness, with courage. I dare say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a courage we call Holy Spirit courage. Holy Spirit boldness, ladies and gentlemen. When we read what the sermon that Peter preaches, Peter is quoting a few chapters of the Bible. Joel and two places in Psalms. We don't have time. But he is only preaching the same way he was preaching. But now, with the Holy Spirit boldness, ladies and gentlemen, with the courage from the Holy Spirit, I pray that the impact of the Holy Spirit for me and you, number one, will be the desire to go to a dying world and preach the gospel with boldness, ladies and gentlemen, with courage. I pray that the Lord, among us, the many things he's going to do for us, even as he gives us patience, that our patience will cause us to be a salt of the earth, that men will see how patient we are, and they will do what they will glorify the Lord. I pray as we become spirit-filled men and women, that men will see our love, and especially so, our love for the lost souls of men, and they will desire to have this Jesus of Nazareth who causes people to love the way you love. I pray that the impact of the Holy Spirit for all of us would be salvation. The Bible says, and those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I will pour out my spirit. And at the end of that portion, there is salvation. Peter is standing before men. He is preaching the gospel. Remember how many there were? There are 120 men. Let us now do numbers. Because numbers are not bad. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, in verse, in verse 42, verse 41, those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added unto them. Imagine a church of 120 people, by the end of the day, had 3,120 members. One day, not 10 years, ladies and gentlemen. Not, not, not a vigorous crusade. No, one day, ladies and gentlemen, in one day, I, the Lord, will do what will make it happen. When he fills us with the Holy Ghost, I pray that the biggest impact that we will see in our days will be the souls of men. I pray that he will do it in our days. That in our days, ladies and gentlemen, 3,000 souls will come to his knowledge as he fills us with the Holy Ghost, as we speak in new tongues, as we walk into the gifts of prophecy, as we become men of love and patience and, and long-suffering, that men would come to the knowledge of Christ in their thousands. You know why I keep waiting and hoping that one day 3,000 men shall come? Because the same, same promise was given to this man. The same, same waiting that I am doing, these men who are doing. The same, same in feeling that was done to this man, ladies and gentlemen, is the same, same in feeling that the Lord continues to promise to me. I am no, I know with courage that one day, no, not just 3,000, but thousands upon thousands shall know the Lord as we offer ourselves to him. That is his promise, ladies and gentlemen. I pray that the biggest impact of the infilling of the Holy Ghost would be the souls of men. Would be the souls of men. This was an ordinary church, probably struggling. They were initially not even 120. They were fewer. But on one day only. Now I know it is not our advertisement. Now I know, ladies and gentlemen, it is not our music. Now I know it is not our cathedral. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know it is not all these things, but it is the working of the Holy Spirit. Even as we pray, we know it is the Lord who does it. Even as we travel, even as we invest into a sanctuary, even as we go out into open airs, let us always go to open airs knowing our work is like the work of Peter. Peter is quoting scripture, but there are two sermons happening. I finish by saying there are two sermons happening. One by Peter and the other one by the Holy Spirit. Drawing men. Paul says we don't preach the gospel in the eloquence of words. No, he says it is not our words. He knows it is the power 
of the Holy Spirit. The power of God breaks boundages. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not who we are. It is not our dressing. It is not our names. It is the power of God. I pray that we will desire this power. I pray that we will desire this in feeling. That in our days, men would come to his knowledge. In our days, our family members would be changed. That in our days, ladies and gentlemen, people would be made whole. That in our days, that he would do it in our days. We have heard of you, O oh God. Bwana tumesikia matendo yako. Bwana hata siku zetu si ufanye siku zetu. That the impact of the infilling of the Holy Ghost would be the transformation of the souls of men. I want us to all go before the Lord. Let us stand up in his presence. I want you to go before the Lord prayerfully. Tell the Lord, fill me up, O oh God. Bwana si unijaze. Bwana si unijaze. Na baby unasema, Pastor, mimi ningependa uniombe. Kuja hapa mbele. Najua tu wakati wetu umeenda. Come in front. I am going to lay my hands on you together with the pastors that we have in this house. You are saying, I feel in my heart I need to be prayed for. Ukuja hapa mbele ni itakuwekelea mikono. Na naamini Bwana atafanya kazi yake. Do it. In, go before the Lord. Go before. Tell the Lord, do it for me. Do it in our days, O oh God. God. Release that power. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Is there anyone in this church who is saying, I have been longing for the infilling. I want to experience the infilling today. You are saying, I want to experience that power. Just come in front. We will pray together with you. You are saying, I have never spoken in tongues. I have never seen the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in my life. Do not continue sitting there. Today is your day. When you hear his word, do not harden your heart. Who is saying, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. Is there anyone who is saying, I want this in filling of the Holy Spirit? We will be kind enough to pray with you. The rest of us can continue telling the Lord to fill us again and again. Go before the Lord. You know where it is that you are struggling. Is there anyone, even if there is only one man, I will pray with you. I am convinced there must be a man in this place. There must be a woman who is saying, Lord, I want to be filled by the Holy Ghost. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. The promise is there. The promise is there. The promise is there. Go before the Lord. Tell the Lord, to, I, I, I want this experience. Have you not promised, oh God? Do it in our days. Do it in our days, oh God. 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 Bwana sufanye siku zetu bwana. Bwana sufanye ayo makusu zetu. Do it in our days, oh God. Oh, rabasa kanda bababa. Oh, do it in our days. Lord, do it in our days, oh God. Won't you release your power, our Father, like never before. Let there be an infilling of the Holy Ghost in this place. Let there be an infilling of the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, Lord, this is our cry. The cry, dear Father, like that of Peter, dear Lord, at the upper room. Lord, this is our cry, oh God. We are the cry of your servant, oh God. Do it in our days, 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 oh God. Lord, we are expectant. Lord, we are expectant. Lord, we are expectant. Oh, put a burden of prayer, oh God. Put a burden of prayer, oh God. Oh, put a burden, oh God. Put a burden of prayer in our hearts, oh God. Let us travail, O oh God. Let us travail, O oh God. Lord, we will not be tired. We will not be tired. Lord, we will not be tired, O oh God. Do it in our days, O oh God. Oh, Buana, Sufanya, I am a cool Buana. Sufanya, I am a cool Buana. Sikuze to Buana. Yakati ze to Buana. Yakati ze to Buana. Joe him a Buana. Joe him a Buana. Buana, Usichelewe. Sio Johima, Johima Bwana, Johima Bwana, Johima Bwana, Bwana sio kuje, sio kuje Bwana, Johima Bwana, patience and long suffering, patience and long suffering, speaking in tongues, prophecy, interpretation of tongues, do it in our days, oh God, meekness and love. Kindness, oh God, would you do it in our days, oh God? The boldness to preach the gospel, the boldness, oh God, Holy Spirit boldness, Holy Spirit boldness, Holy Spirit boldness, Holy Spirit courage. Do it in our days, oh God. Do it in our days, oh God. Bwana, siufanye yaya mambo, siufanye yaya mambo, bwana. 
Bwana si ufanya haya mambo Bwana. Nyakati zetu Bwana. Nyakati zetu Bwana. Nyakati zetu Bwana. Bwana si ufanya haya mambo Bwana. Nyakati zetu. Nyakati zetu. Nyakati zetu. I want to make the last call. I want to give you an opportunity. You're saying pastor I feel in my heart that I want to be filled by the Holy Ghost. I want that in feeling. I don't want to go away without praying for you. That is the work I came to do. Do not be afraid. Come in front I will pray with you. I know they must be a man. They must be a woman somewhere. Maybe you're even watching us on TV or on any of our platforms. The Lord does not know distance. He say 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 tell the Lord Lord it is me. It is me oh God, it is me. I want that in feeling. I want to be a totally spirit filled man. If there is no one in this place I want to pray for all of us. Father, won't you hear our cry? Won't you hear our cry, oh God? Lord, we have heard the promise. We want to wait, oh God, prayerfully. We want to wait prayerfully, oh God. Bathe in us, oh God. Won't you bathe in us, oh God? Bathe in us, oh God. Oh God, that 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 burden for prayer, that burden for waiting on you, oh God. Bad in us, Lord Jesus, Lord. Help us to be patient and do it, Lord, in your days. When your time is right, Lord, do it. Fill us continuously to overflow, oh God. Make us holy, a hundred percent spirit-filled men. Oh Lord, all the fruits they are of, oh God. All the gifts they are of, we desire all of them, Lord Jesus. Do it in our days, Abba Father. And when you've done it, Lord, help us to go boldly to a dying world. Boldly, Lord, with courage to a dying world and preach the gospel, Lord. And we pray that in this church, Lord, though we are more than 120, we long for the days of thousands upon thousands coming to your knowledge thousands upon thousands father we are enlarging the place of our gathering we are enlarging lord the place of our gathering bwana tunajua hii hema ni ya kunia watu 1300 bwana bwana tunaita watu 1300 bwana bwana tunajua kuna viti pale nyuma ambazo zina watu wamekalia bwana si hao watu tunawaita si bwana tu unaongeza mahali petu bwana we are lengthening our cords oh god we are increasing our capacity oh god when you have filled us lord let us be able to go boldly to a dying world we would make a mistake as a church to wind up this service without giving an opportunity to make the decision to believe in Christ there is no infilling if you are not a believer the condition for the infilling of the holy spirit is being a believer you're not born again you're saying past i want to accept the lord as my personal savior i want to pray for you just come in front i'll pray for you you're saying i don't know the lord mimi sijaokoka mimi sijasamehewa dhambi zangu mimi naelekea njia ambayo ni njia majuto ningependa kuomba na wewe just lift up your hand i will pray with for you i will pray with you you're saying there is someone behind there you know tumkono wako vizuri sio gope you know mkono wako ndugu yangu kucha tu hapa karibu tuomba na wewe kucha tu hapa karibu papa chris just there's a there's a young man who lifted up his hand let's appreciate the law salvation is in the house of the law salvation has come into the house of the law nani mwingine anasema mimi mimi ningemtaka huyu yesu mimi sio gopi mimi huyu yesu ningemtaka just pick a microphone and continue praying for him just pray for this gentleman pastor chris pray for this gentleman that's how we do it nowadays ule mtu anamleta hapa mbele anamuombea who else is saying mimi ningempata ningemtaka huyu yesu unasema mimi mimi ningependa kusamehewa dhambi zangu kuna yote ambaye anasema pia mimi pia mimi pia mimi just continue just continue here this is a mic thank you lord thank you lord Father we thank you for this soul o king of glory that has given his life to Christ this morning Bwana tunakushukuru kwa ni mazao yako tumeyaona hapa Bwana huyu mtumishi Bwana jana ulinena 
tukihubiri neno lako bwana na mtumishi wako solomon alikuwa ameketi bwana na akasikia neno lako bwana na amekubali siku ya leo kukukubali yesu kama mwokozi wa maisha yako yake bwana ninaomba urudie nyuma yangu umekubali yesu ndio mwokozi wa maisha yako Nakupali Yesu ndiyo mwokozi wangu. Haleluya, haleluya. This man Lord God Almighty says he has accepted that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior over his life. Lord we thank you. Lord we thank you. Bwana katika jina la Yesu tunakushukuru kwa maisha ya Ruben. Tunakushukuru Bwana kwani huu mtumishi wako amekubali na akakupokea Bwana anaomba siku ya leo ubadilishe maisha yake amefungwa na minyororo mingi bwana na siku ya leo amesema amechoka alikubali bwana na akasema amechoka sasa hivi bwana anakuja tu mbele yako amekukubali na anasema umjaze bwana anasema umuongoze na umuelekeze kutoka mabonde ambayo alikuwa yamemshika bwana minyororo iliyokuwa imemshika bwana tunaomba umuondolee katika jina la Yesu Amen amen. Pastor naomba ukuje umsaidie. Let's pray together. The man says he wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we'll pray together in faith. Amen. Father fill this young man with your spirit of God. Fill him oh God to overflow our Father. Fill him with your spirit of God. Father fill him. Fill him in Jesus name. Fill him our Father. Oh Lord fill him dear Lord. Take away king of glory the bondages that have held him for too long. Take away the bondages of our Father. Whatever bondage dear Lord I cast it out in Jesus name. I speak against those shackles of sin. Set him free our Father and fill him with the Holy Ghost. Fill him with the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Let it be filled with the spirit of the Lord. Fill him with the spirit of the Lord. Fill him in Jesus name to overflow. You are filled in the name of Jesus. You are filled in the name of Jesus. You are filled in the name of Jesus. Let us appreciate the Lord in his house. Pastor and Pastor Pierre. I want us to sit, sit down for one minute. Just sit down for one minute. I want the pastors, the pastors and the ministers please stand up. Unaona sasa kama umeogopa kukuja hapa mbele? Unaona watu wamesimama hapa? After hii service ikiisha, kuja tu waone. Sisi tunajaribu, hatutaki, tunalilia nafsi yako. Sisi tunalilia mpaka nafsi ya mtu ambaye ni muoga. Hatusemi eti hii country si ya waoga hapana. Sisi mpaka nafsi aliyeogopa tunaililia. So hawa watu kanisa ikiisha na unataka kuokoka au na watu watu. Na ukiogopa hawa watu ukiona mtu yote huku na mtu akikuona muombea aokoke. Sisi hata nafsi ya mtu, mtu atubagui sasa. Tumeona. We, we've seen that, he, he, that if we don't do whatever we must do lives are being lost. The soul of a man is so important. Mungu wabariki mkachini. Now let us receive the blessings of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and be gracious to you. May the Lord, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And now grace, peace, joy and mercy that comes from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and myself always. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus.